What's up guys, Semi Revolution here, and today massive hype because no one really understands or knows this, but we have a map pack that's coming out. Um, I'm here with Danzel who did a ton of work on this along with Vivid and Ragnarok. They've been working on this for a really long time. And uh, I believe we have 12 maps coming out, which is pretty sweet. Um, and we're just going to talk, go through these maps, and then at the end we're also going to talk about the new league that we're starting this fall that you're invited to. Um, so, Danzel, say hi to the team. Hello, YouTube. And uh, we're excited to do this. So, as you can see, we got, got a bunch of the maps here. Well, we're going to jump into the first one with Alberta, and this one is close to home for you, Danzel. Yes, this map is what inspired me to start learning map design. I wanted a map designed after where I uh, where I grew up in southern Alberta. So this map is designed to have the Rocky Mountains to the west, river in the middle, and uh, lots of wild animals and deer and bison, but uh, not much coin. You got to go to the mountains for that. Yeah, I think this one looks fun just because of the diverse kind of nature of it. You got some water, you got mountains. Um, obviously trees, and then having the trade post, the gold, and the um, natives all kind of in different spots of the map makes you compete for more in one part of the map, which I think will be pretty cool. And w one thing that makes this map unique is that you start with two outposts in your base. So you have that defense nice and early, and then as you start to run out of resources, then you have to start pushing out. So if you're playing a, a Civ that's a little slower, like Dutch, then you have that defense. But if you need those resources, once you start running out, you have to be ready to push out because when those two mines are out, it's a long trip to get to the other resources. Yeah, I like it. Th this will be a fun one. Um, I'm looking forward to this. And um, then, um... In games that we've tested on it, um, once it's usually around the same time both players run out of mines, the game just goes wild. That's good it's very stuff. fun. It's my kind of game, man. Um, so I'm bearing straight up next. This one's this, cool. Yeah, this map was designed by Vivid and Lee Plain. He uh, wanted sort of an ice map, uh, limited build area, because the ice is unbuildable. You have a single trade route running down the middle that stops you from walling properly. Just uh, not many resources, not a lot going on. It's very open and sparse, kind of like Siberia. But a little bit faster paced i think because it's a bit smaller yeah and this one like you said uh in the description there it's kind of hard to build the walls because that trade route runs right down the middle um so you kind of almost have to have two wall sections if you're gonna really wall up around your base on each side of that little peninsula yeah it's, it's an interesting one i've played two games on this one so far and they're both very very fast paced it's good, you end man. up with a lot of trash units, uh, wooden wooden food units. Yeah. There's not a lot of coin. For sure. All right, I don't even know how to pronounce this one, uh, but this looks like an awesome map. I love the woods on this. So this one is Cerro Akahe. Um, any native Guarani speakers in the comments can criticize my pronunciation. This map <laughs> takes place in the uh, Cerrado of Paraguay. So... It's very spread out, very sparse. I know the map looks like there's tons of trees and like tons of everything, but this map is huge. So the idea behind this map is that every player has at least four trade posts that they can control. And then you have to go searching for resources because you only get one in like uh, in base mine. And so you got to try to control a lot of resources. There's going to be lots of chances to raid, lots of chances for... Um, boomy style and it's really easy to, to uh to lose track of all your villagers and this map was specifically designed for free-for-all games yeah buddy that's what i'm talking about <laughs> so there's there's eight trade posts one for every player even at max and then four jesuit posts which can help defend raids because they're a ranged cav that you can get in h2 so it's uh, kind of a way to play strategically if you want to prevent raids that's cool. And then is there a mountain in the middle? There is, is that... a mountain ridge all the way around the map. And then a little mountain in the middle. Very cool. There's a, yeah, it's modeled after a real uh, ancient crater in southern Paraguay. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to playing that one, especially on free-for-all. I'm excited because yeah. some of these will be able to do for our the free-for-all tourney coming up. So that'll be fun to get a nice mix of maps in that. Yeah, absolutely. This map is... Uh, 
is spectacular for free for all because there's so many places you can hide and stuff. Yeah, that's good. And there's no limit to the wood. Like if you ever run out of trees on this map, it's got to be three or four hours in. <laughs> that's that awesome. Spawns, it spawns over 3,000 trees. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so Chesapeake. So this one was made by Ragnarok. Um, this is pretty cool. So you get a starting bank on this map. Um, so it kind of looks like, uh, I would say, Northwest Passages a little bit, Amazon a little bit. Um, in terms of it's split by a river and on the other side you have trade posts and um, it's pretty cool because you obviously have to go on the other side to grab those so you can contest on that while you're contesting on the mainland um, and then other than that kind of is like Carolinas on the mainland um, but like I said you do have that bank start so it could give you an interesting um, interesting start in terms of how that coin gathers what you want to do with it if you want to maybe play Dutch and try to grab a bank early or Maybe you play with Germany and get all that coin in early. There's a lot of stuff you could do. Maybe grab market upgrades. Um, so I think the possibilities on this one are pretty cool. And um, no whales on the water. So that bank is what you need to get that coin. Yeah, absolutely. This map is, uh, the way it's done, it doesn't interfere with the Dutch bank limit. So you can still build all four or six or 10 and still have that extra bank. So you can have up to 11 banks as Dutch on this map. That's good. Maybe get some Dutch some love. Yeah, they need some help. <laughs> they do. <laughs> All right, Death Valley, dude. All right, so this was my personal request. And when I heard that they were making maps, I wanted an incredible free for all experience. And this is what came in my head. And maybe that's maybe that's uh not good because this is literally gonna split people apart. Um, so you start in your base with very few trees, probably a handful of trees. Um, you have your coin mine, and then you have a hunt. I believe you get a couple cows, um, and then that's it. Like, you don't have anything else by your base. As you can see, the whole rest of the map is barren. And so, like, if this is eight player free for all, each player has that little bit. And then the center is where people need to go for the resources. So, all the trees are surrounded by trade post lines. There's hunts all over the middle there, and then coin mines in there as well. So, it's just chaos after you run out of resources, and you really need to plan strategically how you're going to push onto that um, oasis part of the map. And um, I think this one's going to be fun. It's It looks crazy, and uh, I definitely cannot wait for this to be in our uh, free-for-all tourney. Yeah, I think that would be a, a map where you'd want to play a Civ that has um, access to resources sort of like uh, Dutch or Japan. Yeah, it would, it would help out a lot, wouldn't it? Yeah, or Sue, of course, because then you just need your fire pit. That'll be good. And like that'll really open up some, some cool opportunities in free-for-all, which will be fun. Absolutely. Um, so then DACA, so this is another one of Vivid's um, maps here. As you can see, kind of Bangladesh area in terms of um, got kind of a river somewhat coming down the middle there. Um, I believe it's kind of creviced in, and then each opponent is on either side of it. Um, ocean in the bottom with some whales. You have fish there, and then a large amount of berries on this map. So once you kind of run out, um, there's a lot of berries to go around, and then... Natives in the north are with the um, the same natives that are on the Deccan. And then, yeah, it's kind of cool because you get two different spawns. So obviously you have the one uh, on, up top there where you, it's going straight across. And then the one the bottom's more like Northwest Passages where you get them on um, both sides. Um, definitely a cool one. I think this could be a really cool two-player 2v2 map. Um, but yeah, what do you think about this one? Um, in the games I play with this one, those choke points become really important with the with the river because... They're the only places where you you can control, but you also can't put a wall on them. And so it adds an interesting dynamic of trying to control, but not spend too much wood walling. And the trade route blocks a lot of it as well. So you kind of have to play really aggressively, but the resources in base are very limited as well, once again. Um, so you have to play in such a way that you are containing your opponent and trying to keep him out of your side of the map. It's it's very dynamic. Yeah, it's and cool. The, uh, a lot of a lot of map control play. And the good the natives there have um some good upgrades. The one has a berry gathering upgrade, so that's like really, really helpful if you can grab that because there's so many berries on that map. Vegetarianism, man. That's a good powerful stuff. upgrade. Yeah. Especially if you're Japan. Yeah, for sure. Um, right. So Inu Inuvik, is that how you say this one? Inuvik, yes. Yeah. So this one is uh, 
modeled after Northern Canada. So each player starts very close together on opposite sides of a frozen river. You got islands and whales and fish to the north. There's almost no wood on this map. I believe um, with eight players, it still only spawns about 50 trees. So it's very, very limited because up in Northern Canada, the tree line, there's not a lot of wood. So I wanted to make a map that had wood as the limited resource. So what's interesting about this one is you have water options and you have trade posts that you can set to stagecoach for wood. And there's lots of coins so you can buy wood at the market. Like you, you don't have to worry if you're smart about running out of wood, but it's not going to be the normal way. And of course, getting stagecoach, water booming takes wood. So you have to be smart. If you want to boom, you have to be very conservative. If you want to rush and play aggressively, you got to plan ahead because if you run out of resources and you didn't make any uh, trade posts on stagecoach or any boats at all, then you're going to run out real fast. So this this map is sort of a starvation map. That's cool. And I like how you have the islands as a major part of the map. They're almost it's almost like two thirds of the map there. Um, so it really kind of makes you think what you want to do. Do you want to go water like you can see all those whales and stuff? Or are you going to try to stay on the mainland or do a little both? Yeah, there's no wood on the islands. There's some hunts that spawn on the northernmost two, but there's lots of coin. Like if you shipped advanced market, you could get a lot of wood very quickly on this map by buying it. Unfortunately, free for all is not functional on this map right now. Everyone just ends up crammed together on the bottom. Um, I'm going to release at a future date another version that will be more balanced for free for all, where it'll have a different spawn for the free for all version, kind of like how Deccan does a, a different shape when it spawns free for all, something like that. That'll be cool. So, I mean, you can play free for all on it, but you're all you're going to be so close, you can barely build anything. It'll just be terrible. What's wrong with that? That's that's awesome. <laughs> Kawa, how do you say this? I have no idea. You can ask Vivid on Kawa wa yam, Kawa wa yamog, Lake. That's amazing. So um, I, I no. do know a little bit about this map. I've played it with uh, with him a few times. So this map is a Northern Ontario inspired map. There's a little lake with like two fish in it. There's a cliff that separates on the northern part and then a trade route, a trade route to the south. And then it has, I kid you not, Iroquois trading posts. Love it. Going back to the vanilla days. And each player starts with the, the starting water flag on this one as well. So that's cool. You, you can like ship frigates or galleons or, you know, whatever strategic units you want to into that that water well, section i love how there's two fish on the water yep two <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so much food definitely worth sending schooners for yeah this one's cool though with that that split in the north maybe give me a little safety point if you can do that but yeah and lots what? of choke points to the south with the trees and stuff so like yeah. walling is essentially impossible on this map that'll be cool it, it's intriguing i think uh it would be a good map for uh germany for aztec aggressive kind of sieves yeah for sure oh no i didn't i didn't move it this is your good one man this is the this is one of the best maps this is awesome so this one's called manitoulin um in the picture here there's a couple coin mines missing we fixed it since then but uh this map was one of my uh earliest designs as well i wanted a map where each player had two bodies of water between each other so what's unique about this map is that you have to build a dock and then cross to the other side and then build another dock or move your home city water flag, etc., in order to get to the other player. So you know that you won't get raided early. You have a very fast race to control that middle section and you cannot lose control of your side of the water or you're going to run out of resources really fast. I think so it's, in, it's, it's cool because you have like all the hunts in that middle section. So it really is pushing players to go there early. Yeah. The one, once again, the, the coin mines and the hunts are fixed a little bit in the version we're, we're releasing now, but, uh, but it, most of the hunts and coin are in the center section. There's also the trade route that you can upgrade. 
but the map is also quite long along that stretch. So it's very easy if you're controlling most of it to miss a little bit, like a very far away dock or all sorts of things. There's a lot of possibility for uh, stalemates, for um, camping mortars on the far side of the river and attacking the TC from the middle section. Like there's a lot of things you can do on this map. And I feel like it's really um, gonna be a, a good map for uh, four player um, teams, three player teams, and even 1v1 and 2v2s, but it's really designed for all sizes of teams. That's awesome. And yeah, you were kind of saying how the cannons reach across the water. So it kind of adds another dynamic onto that too. Well, exactly. Like Portuguese can just camp a, a mortar or two on the, uh, on the center section and just bombard across the river. Yeah. They'll be, they'll be hard to deal with, but definitely fun map. That looks, that looks exciting. Yeah. I think this one will be a, a really unique one. Yeah, and then we have Minnesota, which is also kind of a, a unique one. Um, so tons of lakes on this map, and there are fish in there, so you can build docks all over those. Um, but additionally, as you can see, we got the trade post lines all around it too. So in a free-for-all, this would be awesome. Each player gets a trade post line um, along with their own kind of lake, and then that's on each side, so you got a lot of contesting going on there. Um, I think this is just cool because like we've seen maps on the vanilla with the bayou and some of those kind of maps where there are water features, but not fully blocking off um, in like multitude like this one is. So I think that'll be kind of neat to see if, if people decide to make a bunch of docks and like ships in each of the water or just ignore it completely or maybe just go for the middle ones or what. Um, but definitely a big possibility there. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities on this map. You don't get a water flag, though, which means you can't just ship um, like like galleons or, or yeah. monitors. So you have to train them, which does add, a, I think, a fair limitation. Otherwise, you could just move your water flag to your opponent's lake and then just drop a monitor. And... <laughs> sure. <laughs> That'd be RIP insane. factories. Yeah, but th this will be a good free-for-all one. I'm excited for this one, too. Yeah, I think it's good to have a few free-for-all inspired maps absolutely and then this is one of our favorites yeah this one's my favorite of the ones that i've made so a request came in from the clemson fan for a panama map and so this is the result so each team starts out on either the left or the right side and on your side you have a trade post and two bodies of water that you need to try to control the natives on here are Zapotec and, and Carib, so there's lots of uh, rush options. And this map is absolutely huge, but it's also very narrow. So like, if you want to walk a forward villager, it takes longer to walk across than it does to age up, so you have to <laughs> keep that in mind. But if you do get rushed, you don't have much place to go because you're, you're stuck in that corner. So there's a lot of um, options on this map to play either very, very aggressively or very boomy. Yeah, this will, this will be a fun one. I think team games on this would be really cool too. Um, but just the two bodies of water and having it not like like the Yucatan where it's straight balanced. I like how it has a kind of curve to it. I think that's, that's going to be cool to see. Yeah, the south side is easier to um, defend because you have your TC there. You have that island. You can build an outpost or put a fort or another TC. Mm -hmm. The north side's a lot more open. It's a little bit safer at the same time because you're less likely to need to to defend it. So you have kind of this uh, conundrum of, do I want to just boom right close safe to home or do I want to try to risk the further away resources? And so it, there's a lot of decision-making on this map. It's very dynamic. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm excited for this one. All right, and then Vietnam. Yes, this one's another one of the brainchilds of Vivid. Yeah, so this one, I mean, it, it reminds me of um, Ericania, um, however you say that one, where it's kind of a long strip and then you got some water. Um, mm -hmm. But I like this one because it's a little bit thicker land and then the coin mines are more scattered because on that one in vanilla, or I guess Asian dynasties, it's all like coin mines in the center. So I think this could be cool because you, you obviously have the water option, but there's also a really good land option in terms of resources too. Yeah, and you start out pretty far away from the water, 
which um, makes it difficult to both control water and land at the same time. And the, um, the natives on here are the Rattan Shields. So you can rush with those. They're, they're just a good unit to have on there. And there's a lot of berries and uh, so many treasures. You should see what it looks like when you spawn four players or eight yeah. players. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So this is a very treasure heavy map. Um, plays out like that map you were, you were mentioning. You have a little bit of water, some native options, lots of treasures. Um, really dynamic. And one thing that sets this one apart is that you get a lot of crates when you spawn. So you get the bonus crates like uh, Carolina or Deccan. That's so good, I man. mean, if you if you want to discover every age dock, if you want to save up for a forward base, if you want to drop an early bank as Dutch, like there's a lot of things you can do on this map that make it a little bit more uh, a little bit more dynamic. Yeah, and that's awesome. So I think each of them have their a little thing that makes them unique. Um, I love the mix between free for all and one v one and um team maps um but yeah this is kind of cool I, I know you guys have been working on this for a while um so we'll have a zip file below so you guys can download and um we're actually going to be going and putting these into a league which is our upcoming tourney and i'm going to be talking about that in a second so on those maps we are going to have our first inaugural season of the revolutionary league and this is something we've kind of been talking about for a while um just to get more people involved and in terms of if you lose you're not knocked out um, so how this works is we're basically hosting a season or a league uh, where we'll have five different divisions down here. So we'll have below PR10, um, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, and 26 to 31. And um, up to eight players in each of the divisions. If there's interesting numbers, we'll kind of shift as needed. Um, but basically you can get yourself registered into a division, um, and then you're going to be playing games each week. Uh, until I believe it's December, yeah, December 2nd when playoffs begin. Um, so kind of a cool opportunity for people to get committed to something and some competition. Um, I think it'll be lots of fun for people. And um, all this is going to be linked below. So definitely check out the maps below. Um, these league games are going to be played on our maps, and um, we'll have that all linked. But looking forward to it. It's a cool kind of opportunity to, sh to get those maps some um, gameplay experience, uh, give some people the opportunity to be committed to something some kind of competition that maybe um they wouldn't normally be in and uh, especially you're not going to get knocked out if you lose you'll you'll have a bunch of games to play um so definitely read up on this here we have all the all the rules in terms of how the best of three series is going to work um like how many how many games you're going to be playing um obviously you're going to be playing each player and um all that stuff is going to be listed in here um if you have questions definitely put it down below um, but please check this out. We're, we're trying to host things to get people um, as involved as much as possible, especially some of the newer or um, maybe less professional players. And um, yeah, we are always looking for feedback, looking for um, your thoughts. Um, and yeah, so here, here's kind of a regular season map stuff. But definitely looking forward to your feedback, guys. Um, looking forward to seeing where this channel is going. And it's awesome to get a, kind of a community going together here. And I'm uh, just adding on to it a little bit each time. Um, big shout out to Vivid, Danzel, Ragnarok, um, Clemson, Clemson fan for uh, helping out and getting this going. A lot of this is their work. Um, I'm just really the guy that's publishing it in terms of they wanted to do this, and it's cool to see uh, empowered people. Um, so, yeah, very, very excited for that and very thankful. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, hope you guys support and sign up. Everything's in the Discord. Um, and, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one.